Uh, this is uh, the Ben and Jay show. This is the first night that we're actually doing a 7 p.m. show on a Friday. Yes, and sir. Exclusive. So um, we don't have tunes tonight to actually go by, but what we actually have is a singing duet yes. uh, with Ben and Rachel <laughs> and April. <laughs> Everybody is going to go in. I'm not much of a singer, so I, I'll just be I'll just be the uh, the the lead. Uh, what, what is it? There you go, there you go. That's me right there. So Ben, whenever you're ready, you can go ahead and uh, kick that uh, that uh, that falsetto. I can show you the world, shining, <laughs> simmering, splendid. Tell me, princess, now when did you last let your heart decide? I can open your eyes. Make me wonder by wonder. Over, sideways, and under. On a magic carpet. I, I ride a whole new world. A new fantastic point of view. No one can tell us no or where to go or say we're only dreaming. A whole new world, a dazzling place I never knew. But when I'm way up here, it's crystal clear. And now I'm in a whole new world with now you. I'm in a whole new world with unbelievable sights, indescribable feeling, storm tumbling, freewheeling through an endless time and sky. A whole new world. Don't you dare close your eyes. I'm like a shooting star. I come so far. I can't go back to where I was. A surprise. To horizons to pursue. I'll take the many words. It's over to let me share this whole new world with you. Oh, new world, where we'll be a fair and chase for you and me. Oh, my God. Wait, it was like Jesus was talking. Where did that voice come from? And Ben, yo, you're a man of many talents. I, I don't know what I don't I don't know why I'm here. I'm about to just get up and leave because you don't need me. You're just a man by itself. Ladies and gentlemen, the Ben and Jay show. You you can expect nothing less but just the best. And and we had the best. Uh this is our today's guest, Rachel Baker and uh her, her mother, April Baker. Uh, and you know my guy, Ben, but we'll get a little bit into that. But first, this webinar is made possible by Access Services. Access Service is a nonprofit serving 11 counties in eastern Pennsylvania with the mission to create better ways to serve people with special needs. They've been doing it for 44 years, and they're only expanding their services as they bend to fit the curve of those in need in eastern Pennsylvania. I'm a little tongue-tied because what I just witnessed was a full scale opera in front of me and I didn't expect that. It gave me that jolt, that caffeine that I needed to get up. So I definitely do appreciate that. And um, we're great to have you guys here. Ben, what do we got as far as our raffle today? So we actually have a surprise. We're gonna do two raffles today. We're gonna oh. do the candles. And we're gonna give away Philly pretzel gift certificates. There you go. Hey Ben, can you the candles? Uh, do we have a picture of the candles by any chance or no? Um, Kaylee, I think Kaylee might have them. Okay, guys, you are in a special treat if you win this candle. This candle is very, very, very amazing. I don't want to spoil it, but good luck to anybody who actually wins that. You won't be dissatisfied. 
Yep. But great. I've never been satisfied. I've never been satisfied. <laughs> He's on a roll. Hey. He's on a roll. Hey, Ben, Let's why don't you tell everybody about off. yourself yes. uh, for those individuals that are new here? So my name is Ben. Um, first of all, I am on the autism spectrum. I am 22 years old. I was diagnosed when I was two, and um, I thought I would never talk, and now today I just talk and talk, and there's no off button on me. I was on the Ellen Show. They told me I was never going to read or write. They told me they were never going to drive. Um, they told me I'm never going to win Homecoming King. I proved everybody wrong. And now I'm the brains, and Jamel over here is the muscle. He is the man. And I want to give him a special shout-out from last night. Shout-out to Jamel Owens for being uh... at the top last night. You're too you kind. Amazing. Amazing. No, yo, I'm serious. You were amazing last night. I mean, honestly, I was so touched by what you said. Those kids were so excited. <laughs> and I just can't believe out of God's glory that rainbow came out. You're right. You definitely are right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, what he's talking about, we had the privilege of speaking uh, in front of a youth ministry at a church. Uh, actually, I was there to support Ben. Uh, and uh, the pastor there uh, actually said, hey, we got room for one more, you know, uh, testimony. And I just got up and, I, you know, spoke from the heart. You know, God is good and uh, do everything, um, everything that he does. I can be great and uh, his love is sufficient. So I got up and, you know, just basically spoke from my heart, made sure these young adults know that they are loved um, and, and from a different perspective know the power that is within our kids uh such as rachel such as ben such as my son shane um and it, that gives us power in our own right so uh it was a pleasure but going into that my name is jamil owens and you probably are sitting back and wondering how did this dynamic duo come into play well first off i am the host and creator of the awesome show what mm -hmm. the awesome show is, is basically a show to motivate fathers to speak up about their feelings, about their fears, about their disappointments uh, when finding out that their child is diagnosed on the autism spectrum. It does not mean uh, that they feel as though the world is over and I'm glorifying it. What I'm doing is just basically giving them a platform in order to speak from their hearts, get those feelings out and be able to love that child fully with every bit of their being. How I found Ben, Ben was actually a guest on my show with his father, Glenn. Shout out to his father, Glenn. And, yeah, Dad, uh, his story, woo! Yeah, exactly, exactly. His story was so amazing um, that we connected later on uh, by my then girlfriend, who is now my wife, and uh, we just stayed friends, and now we're family. And, and Ben called me up and was like, yo, let's do this show. You down? And I said, hey, I'm down. Let's make it happen. And uh, we've been, we've been uh, through COVID. In COVID-19, we've been doing this show, just letting people know that uh, you are not forgotten. And you know, those awesome individuals, uh, such as everyone that I mentioned, you are not forgotten and you are not alone. So this is why we do it. We do it for you guys. So I just want to go into something that I read, and it was a quote that kind of uh, gave me uh, an aspect of Rachel and who she is. And I wanted to share it with you guys. And It was Oscar Wilde. Uh, who had to say this about theater. I regard the theater as the greatest of all art forms, the most immediate way in which a human being can share with another the sense of what it is to be a human being. Now, another one of my favorite quotes, and this can go to April, as she is a awesome mom, and it's by an unknown person, but I felt it was very, very, uh, very much set the mood for today's show and this quote is there is nothing as powerful as mother's love and nothing as healing as a child's soul so it kind of works both ways with each, uh, april and rachel and uh you know we just want to get right into the interview the meat of everything so you guys understand so rachel and april baker uh to understand the true heart of our awesome children like ben and rachel who grow to be awesome adults one must remove their perspective of what it is to be in the world. One must remove their perspective of the bond and their and the bond that they actually have. Excuse me, I'm kind of tongue twisted. Friday, work with me. 
Uh, some say it's impossible to remove yourself from what it is to be true and seen in a sense, but I remind that some of the astounding creations known to man are on other planets, removed from what we know here on this planet. We have an amazing interview lined up for you today with Rachel, but also with her mother, April, that will go into some of the challenges all some parents, such as myself, face when the world rejects what they don't understand. So Rachel and April Baker, welcome to the Ben and Jay Show. Thank you for being here. You guys are the Thank first you. to be on the night show. Congratulations. Kick off everything. Ben. Thank you. You're the guy. Start us off with the questions, buddy. All right. Well, Ben is having a little bit of technical difficulty. So while he's getting that straight, let me go into one of the questions that I have, which is question number three. And this is for you, Miss Baker. Uh, excuse me, it's obvious that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I would like to say congratulations to you receiving your master's, not a bachelor's, not associates, no, no disrespect to anybody out there, but a master's in special education from Ashford University. What was your driving force when it came to completing school? Well, the first thing when I first started schooling for my bachelor's degree, it was when they started integrating uh, special needs it students is. into the mainstream. Testing. And Hello, can you I hear me? That, I talked to the guidance counselors at the school, and they said, you know, if you're interested in education, you may want to do a dual major. <laughs> I said, yeah, I would do that. So I got my bachelor's in special education and elementary. And then after Rachel was born and James was born, my son, um, I took some time off to raise them both, and then I realized that I really wanted to stay current with what was going on in the field. And while I was working full time and being a mom, I went back to get my master's online, and I was able to receive my master's. It took me two years to get my master's, and it was the best decision I ever made because it helped open doors for me that may not have been opened having had my bachelor's, you know, five years previous to that. So I was really grateful to have that. And of course, having Rachel and knowing she had autism at the time was the driving force for me trying to get more information on special education as well. So I could support her along with other students from a parent's perspective and a teacher's perspective. Impressed, impressed. Not, nothing to say to less. Definitely with the masters. And, and it, isn't it funny that as a parent, our children become, and, and this is for all parents. I mean, it doesn't necessarily go for children on the spectrum but when you become a mom or a dad your driving force is about them it changes your perspective about everything in life and it opens your eyes to new possibilities and opportunities because you want the best for them so definitely kudos to you for uh doing that now we got ben back we got the mayor back so he's going to go into his questions starting off with Sorry about that. i was i don't know what happened jamal <laughs> you know what it was you're too what? hot for that mic they heard you sing and they had to cut you off because they don't want you to go to American Idol. That's I like that. that. <laughs> okay, so let me get into my next question. I'm also excited and proud of 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 you receiving an award in special as special ed ambassador. I'm an ambassador for also at the Eagles Autism Challenge. What made you speak up for yourselves, like others, just like you? Well, I started doing this when I found out I did have autism. At first, I didn't. At first, I was kind of lenient about talking about it, but then I got on my show more, and then I decided, hey, why not? I become an advocate for kids with autism too and special needs. Oh, that's cool. And you got, and you got the award. Mm -hmm. And where did they send you? They sent me to uh, Westchester University. And you wow. Did a, web, a whole day. Yep. I went there with my friends, Sierra, and then um, we got to do a whole day of just like doing like nice activities and talking about um, having autism and stuff like that and special needs programs. And it was really fun to help you learn how to advocate for yeah. yourself and for others. Yep. That's so cool. That's really cool. Wait, Candace Audifer? No, Sierra. Not, no, not, not that. It's another girl I know. Okay. No, because I know a lot of people at Souderton. <laughs> so you're the mayor. You're the mayor. Of course you know everybody. <laughs> um, you know what? I just wanted to piggyback what you said about autism. You know, I'm just so grateful 
for today for people out there and with stuff that's going on. You know, I am so grateful for Jamel. I'm so grateful for Rachel. Um, I just want to say thank you for letting me hang out. Uh, we got to know each other for like, we talked for like 30 minutes about everything at Dairy Queen. Everything. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, man, really? So Dairy Queen is the favorite, huh? You yes. know what? Now you make me hungry. I want to, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. There you go. There you go. Ms. Baker, we previously spoke uh, and you and Rachel told us that you are interested in creating a summer theater and mentorship program. Why do yes. you feel that this is needed and how did this idea come about? Well, actually, this is Rachel's um, idea. And the reason for it is, and no offense against any theater program out there, but oftentimes children who have special needs aren't afforded the opportunity to have a lead role. Mm -hmm. And many kids want that chance. Ben, for instance, is one of them. Rachel would love to have an opportunity to have. Sit down, John. Sit down, John. Uh, 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 there you go, uh, 1776. I love <laughs> seven. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Still have it on VHS. There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> See how passionate they are about their their role in this. And I feel, and Rachel feels, they should have an opportunity to do something with that passion and that talent. So what we want to do is we want to have an opportunity for everyone's ability level. And we'd like to have students who are typically developed students be mentors to students who have special needs so that if there's a nonverbal student or a wheelchair student or a person, an adult, any individual who needs that extra support, we can have extra support from mentors as well if need be. But it gives them the chance to showcase their talent as a lead role. Rachel might pick a song or a lead role and we could do a scene from that show. Give her that chance. And Ben, a scene from his show that he loves because that's what they deserve and that's what everyone deserves. Everybody deserves to have a dream come true and be a star for a day or a star for a moment. Mm -hmm. It's nice to be a show of 1776. Yeah. Do you want to do the whole show of 1776? Someday, Ben, we might. <laughs> Maybe one day. <laughs> Someday we well, might. Well, surprisingly, I'm very, very surprised that Ben pulled out a VHS tape on top of that. It's been, it's been a minute, but Ben got it. It is in pristine condition. So shout out to my man Ben for that one. But, you know, that, that, that five minutes of fame. Is definitely quick, needed. Quick, quick story about this VHS tape. I was Go ahead, the first, first time I ever saw 1776. I was in Second Avenue. Okay, first wow. shout out to Second Avenue in Wansdale. Um, I was right. looking around the VHS tapes and I found this movie and I went, "What is this movie?" And I said, "It's a musical. I'm buying it." So I bought it and ever since then I haven't gotten rid of it. Nice. That's a Great. keepsake. There you go. We'll pass that down, right? Yep. We want to create memories. We want to be. We want to make dreams happen for people who have that opportunity. And it doesn't have to be a performance. They could read a poem that they might have written. They could have. It could be anything that speaks to them and gives them that opportunity to take a moment, like we are right now, and share themselves with others. Because oftentimes they send. They're in the backdrop when they would like to be in the front too. You know. Mm -hmm. And that's Definitely. I, I do. I do feel if I could interject, I do feel as though um, just, you know, the five minutes of fame is just not enough when it comes down to our awesome children. I think they need to be really recognized on a regular basis because they are not of regular people. They are a different total human being um, than what I've ever experienced out here. The love, the compassion, uh, the, the, the energetic you know, love that they give off, I think this is something that the world is missing. And this is the reason why they need to be in the forefront every single day, 365, 366 on elite year. We need to be praising these individuals for standing up for something bigger than what we could possibly fathom in, in life. Um, I look at my son in awe because he, he speaks of equations and math problems like it's nothing and he gets it right. He was on honor roll again this year, but before he was two times student of the uh, month, like for two, three years in a row. These are things wow. that he does with the greatest of ease because he enjoys it. And why not 
why not push these children to the forefront and let them shine along with other kids? They deserve it. They need that. They need to belong. So I definitely do understand where you're coming from. And this is the purpose behind this show. This is the reason why I do what I do on an awesome show, why I do what I do with Ben here collectively, um, why, you know, we're just getting the word out there because autism is an everyday thing. It's not something that's only one month out of the year. It's not something where we feel obligated to feel uh, some type of empathy because they're on TV or they're doing a show. No, this is lifestyle. This is something that we are living through. And, you know, as long as God grants us, we're going to be doing it and we're going to be bringing it to you guys. So, you know, once again, that you are not alone. And that's the most important part. Um, so I just, Jamel, I had an idea ahead. in my brain real quick. Sorry. What's up? Um, we should maybe, maybe I know it's the 4th of July week next week, but I had the star that we should do a 1776 sing along. <laughs> You really want to get the, you really want, uh, let me compare my voice to something. I think wild chickens being hunted will probably be the current, correct comparison to my singing. So I will be there to support you and Rachel in April, but me, uh, nah, I'm, not, I'm not a good singer. Sorry if I'm being on track. I know it's the holiday next weekend, but I know it's 4th of July. I just got stuck mm -hmm. in my brain. I apologize. No, it's no problem. So, Ms. Baker, I am known as the X-Men here on the show because my questions sometimes get a little deep. And I have one right for you right now. So be prepared, but answer from your heart. Now, this question, I had to dig deep with myself because I am a product of that particular environment. And what I mean by that is that we do have some awesome adults um, and parents watch, watching and listening. I often speak about elephants in the room topics when it comes to autism and life after a diagnosis. So I wanna to talk to you about the topic of divorce. I have been there and you spoke to us and told us, unfortunately, you have also, and what advice would you like to tell mothers and fathers, especially the young mothers and fathers that are dealing with this, about autism and the challenges of a family Faces in life? Well, the first thing is once you get that diagnosis, it's very, very hard to accept. And each partner is going to have a different feeling about it. Um, my ex husband speaks of the thought of what is this going to be like for me with my daughter and myself as well? What are we going to have? And of course, when they get diagnosed at three, there's really no we don't know what's gonna come of it. So here's the thing that's most important, and I think that all people should understand, it's okay to get counseling. It's actually very much important to get counseling, because once you get that diagnosis, you become a family that needs wraparound. The child needs to be in, you know, have intervention, but so does the family. We need help also with the diagnosis. They don't come with a book, and, no child comes with a book, but when a child has a special need, it's even more stressful for parents because we're coming at it with a whole new thought process. Our parents may not have experienced these things, so we can't go back and say, okay, what would you do in this situation? It's mm. not, not gonna match necessarily. Their idea isn't necessarily gonna match what would work for Rachel or for Ben or for any child. So we're kind of setting off on a brand new adventure on our own. And we need a tour guide. And what that is, what's important here is that we don't make it too hard for ourselves as parents. And also, if you're struggling, talk to one another. Don't shut each other out. But if you're in a situation where you're divorced, make sure that the child knows that they're important. And don't discuss things in front of each other, in front of the child. It's really important that you... Because with children with autism, very they're very, very sensitive, whether they're verbal or nonverbal. You need to be mm -hmm. very compassionate and understanding of that. Rachel had a very hard time accepting the divorce. The change was absolutely ridiculously hard for her. It's hard for all children, but it's extremely hard for a child who's regimented and used to a certain way of doing things. Now, all of a sudden, she's living with me most of the time and visiting dad on the weekends, and that's really hard. So mm -hmm. we have to be more than 
we have to be more than understanding. So if you're in the divorce situation, understand that. But if you're getting to a point where you're having irreconcilably irreconcilable differences, get help. It's okay mm -hmm. to get help. Mm -hmm. It's not archaic. It's okay to go and get support. Mm -hmm. And there's wanna... support intermediate units. You can go, um, Bucks County has a great one. Montgomery okay. County has a great one. There's lots of support places out there. I want to uh, definitely say thank you and applaud you for, for one, speaking out about this. I know that this is a, a touchy subject and don't take me wrong, but there's, there's a lot of emotions, especially for a mother um, who's going through a divorce, not saying it's not for men, a father, but you know, we tend to hide our feelings a lot, but especially for a mother to really put out her feelings and really express the importance of speaking to someone. Um, now I'm going to give you the perspective a little bit from my end, uh, my standpoint, uh, when finding out my son was diagnosed, I mean, I, I've been, you know, pretty transparent since day one, I contemplated about leaving. And what I seen in that was an easy escape plan out of this situation where I could possibly rewrite my life. The thing that held me back, and this is no discredit to my dad, shout out to my dad, we have a very close bond, but I did not want to be like my father. So in order for me to break that generational curse, I decided to stay. Now, the thing that you brought up about counseling, we did not see, and that is very important. And I urge anybody who's just right there at that brink of actually breaking up, especially men, if you are the leader and the man, you will have to step up and lead in this situation by making the appointments for counseling, by making sure that you attend all appointments, by making sure that you take that initiative in it. But it's not a sign of weakness, Jamil. And that's the one thing a lot of men as well as women see. As a special ed teacher, I almost felt like I should know how to handle this. I'm a teacher, I should know how to handle my daughter. It's a whole different thing when it's 24 seven and they're your child. It's not the same as going into a classroom and handling other people's children or working with other people's children. It was okay for me to say, hey, I am really in need here. I need help. Mm -hmm. And it's also definitely not a sign of weakness for uh, adults to admit that they're struggling. It's okay. There's people out there for that reason to help us. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, and I and I totally agree. For those, keep for those, for those, I was gonna say, I was gonna say for those parents out there, keep fighting for your children, no mm -hmm. matter what is going on in life. You know, um, we want to be able to be successful in whatever we do. Most, most Take importantly, care of as parents, that's another thing. Take care of yourself. Yes, mental. No, we have mental. To do that. Mental health right now is just such a big issue um, mm -hmm. because of COVID-19. It's always been a big issue. My mom suffered from uh, schizophrenia and she was bipolar. So mental health is a very, very important issue. The bottom line is, is that you have to take care of your mental stability, uh, not only for yourself, but for your family. So seek the help that is needed. Gentlemen, please seek the help that is needed. There will be no drug no alcohol, no other person out there that will be able to take care of your mental stability. Talk to a professional. Um, if you need any help for our audience out there speaking to somebody, please contact us at the Ben and Jay Show. We will or, assist you as much as possible. Or the awesome show. Um, so that is very important. That's a very, very, very good uh, point that you came up with. Uh, April and uh, I hope people listen and they take heed to that. I wish I listened back then, but God has a plan for everything and everything works out in his favor and his greatness. And because of that, me and his mom are very much stronger apart, but we still co-parent and we make sure that the love is extended into both households for our child and the surrounding children around them. So Sometimes it works out for the good. Sometimes it works out for the bad. Uh, it's really up to the two adults to make that work. And if not, you know what? You try, put it at God's feet, and he will supply you with a lifetime of happiness and, uh, and progression in life with positive energy. So That's absolutely. Uh, definitely. definitely. Um, 
can I ask you uh, a little bit about, well, no, actually, Ben, you, you have a question. I do. I do. Um, I have, Mrs. Baker, can you tell us a little bit about Rachel when she was a child, when, how, and how, hold on, oh, and how Rachel was diagnosed? I'd be happy to. When Rachel was born, Rachel was very, um, she had the, she was very highly sensory oriented. So a lot of things that wouldn't necessarily work up other people would work up Rachel. So when she started walking at one, she started walking on her toes. And at about two, she hadn't really formed effective language. However, she was scripting from TV shows and, and shows that she was watching literally verbatim, word for word for word. Wow. And she did a lot of hand flapping, echolalia, things of that nature. So by the time she was three, um, her anxiety was the big problem. She wasn't comfortable with going to the swing set, to the slides, things that typical children her age should be comfortable doing. At that point, I knew that we had, her, her doctor kept saying she would outgrow some of these things. Now remember, this was um, six, seven, well, fifteen years. This was ago. back in the two thousands, because back in the two thousands, they didn't have research about this, and they Not should have done it back in the back in the two thousands. I would have really appreciated having early intervention for her when she was a baby. However, mm -hmm. I didn't have it at that time, and um, I think that by three was definitely necessary. <laughs> so at that point, we got her to the doctor. They admitted she had what they called PT, uh, PDD, which is uh, PDD NOS, pervasive developmental disorder, not otherwise specified, because at that time, they didn't give an autism label at wow. that time. She okay. was too young to be labeled as autistic. However, she gave every, every sign of it. Hmm. And so um, her most amazing, remarkable thing was her love of music. And that was something that was a positive for Rachel because she loved music so much. She would sit and watch programming with music and um, she would learn the songs and she started watching the shows and the pattern of communication back and forth. She started bringing us into her communication through that. And finally, we were able to start getting better with her communicating. But wow. Bucks County Intermediate Unit was where we started and they were champions at getting Rachel to start interacting with other peers. And it was it was touchy because Rachel, Rachel literally had to be clawed off of me. And that's partially my fault. And this is something Jamila, I, had, I should have mentioned. Let other people watch your children. Mm. I was unbelievably um, strong about, no, no one else can handle her, I'll deal with her. I always thought that if Rachel had a meltdown or, or behavior, it would reflect on me as a parent that maybe my parenting wasn't strong enough. And you know that a lot of autistic children can have very strong meltdowns yep. that can be very hard to manage. So at the time I was terrified to let anyone watch her. If she were to have one of these meltdowns, I felt as if I was gonna be judged as a parent. Right. Well, your child should know better, you know, these types of things. That's gotta stop, that's gotta go away. Because in order for us to be able to let your child integrate with others, we need to let other people see them. We need to let other people react to yes. them. Let her react to others. Mm -hmm. And that was the hardest thing, getting her to start school was separating from me. She had a really hard time with that. But once she did, things got better for her. But yeah. the diagnosis happened at three and it was um, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. She got Woo! diagnosed and she was speech therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy, and um, school therapy, classroom love therapy. Chop. Love you, chop. Therapy. <laughs> so that's where we were went with it i think i answered your question ben i hope yeah yeah i just want to piggyback i just i'm so thankful for chop you know i don't know if you know about a lot of stuff like um you know about different programming for parents who don't who have diagnosis for kids who have autism in the beginning they don't know about the secondary insurance they don't know about speech therapy they don't know about um how they can cover speech therapy listen mm -hmm. My parents, and we talked about this last night with my parents, Jamal. Mm -hmm. If anybody's on here and they are afraid to talk about it, give me a call. Give me a call. Give me Jamal a call. Send me an email. You find me at Donnie Park and I meet you someday. We'll talk. I'm serious. 
I want to get your I want to get people's perspective of how we can help people with autism. Definitely, well, definitely, definitely. Is to get them into services as early as possible. Yes, it's important. Doctors used to think kids would outgrow some of these things, but if you start to see that there's a concern with your child early on, there's nothing wrong with getting those services started, and insurance will pay for these things. And we were lucky enough to have insurance pay for it because Rachel wasn't developing as her typical peers were developing. And that was a big red flag. And obviously it can be seen as early as one, two years of age. It doesn't have to go to three. Correct. But three is where we typically see it because that's when they have past the walking, the at that point they should have functional language. Doctors will look at them. There's some mm -hmm. things that can be seen by special ed teachers like myself by speech therapists that they can diagnose it sooner. That is true. Uh, definitely, I, I wish I would have paid attention a lot uh, to my son Shane when he was around one or two, because now that I look back, there were some signs that he was exhibiting um, of autism. And what I thought was just like you say, oh, he'll grow out of it. It's just something small, it's a tick or, you know, I. It, it's it's an older thing. It's an older generational thing where oh he'll get over that or she'll get over that, and unfortunately they're not going to. Um, and this is the reason why I plead with everyone, um, all around the world, whoever is watching, um, please have your child diagnosed. Now this message is increasingly important for individuals in our urban communities. I grew up in North Philly. I know it, I've seen it, I experienced it. Your child, unfortunately, is not going to grow out of this tick. It's something that you need to have diagnosed. I am yeah. pleading with you to please have that child diagnosed. It is hard to place a label on your child, I know. I never wanted to place a label on Shane. I never wanted a label placed on me as I am diagnosed as disabled by the federal government, but, we knew what the circumstances were. We hit it head on. And now my son is flourishing. I flourished in life and you and your child can flourish too. So I I, I really just reach out to my individuals, um, my black and brown uh, individual communities to please step up and get your children diagnosed. There is a lag in those communities, unfortunately. And um, we could go in to talk about what the reason is, but. I'm just pleading. If you need help, once again, please reach out to us here at The Awesome Show. I will personally walk in the office with you and sit with you and we can talk. I have no problem doing it because I've been there, but I didn't have anybody there for me and I don't want that for you. So definitely keep that in mind. Same um, for me. Same for me. If, if you ever go. need somebody to talk to, please, please go. give my dad a call. Give my mom a call. I'm serious. There you go. Ben, you got question number seven, buddy. There we go. Um, did Satterton, um, did Satterton, okay, did Satterton High School ever try to give up on Rachel? How did they help her succeed in school? Excellent question, Ben. Actually, Satterton wasn't our first school. When we um, went through the divorce, this is where we moved. We originally were in Upper Perky Omen, and um, again, 15 years ago, things were different. Rachel was placed placed in a classroom of nonverbal children because mm. that's where autism was at the time. Yes. There wasn't a lot known, and Rachel's success for the first few years of school was very minimal because she was being she was a quieter kid, and she kind of liked to do her own thing. So they placed her at her own little table doing her own little thing. And that wasn't helpful. But I will say for Souderton, Ben, to answer your question, they really welcomed us with open arms. Wow. And with force, because um, James and Rachel were having some emotional, you know, some strains from it and from moving also to a new school district, they had social workers work with James and Rachel once a week. They came into school and set up time for them to meet in the office just to work with them. And that to me is incredible. I mean, really incredible. They gave Rachel an opportunity to tour the school earlier if she needed to, to give her a chance to recognize um, things around her so she wouldn't feel out of place. And I can't say enough good things about the way Satterton supported us. 
The other thing is the I in an IEP means individual. Mm. And they looked at us as an individual. They allowed me to advocate for Rachel. They let me tell them the things that I feel, and also my ex-husband, the things that her dad, what we feel is best for Rachel, not a cookie cutter IEP plan, mm -hmm. the plan that works best for her. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's incredible. You have to be willing though, as a parent to go in and talk to them yes. down to earth. You need to say, listen, I know my student, I know my child, here's some things I know work for her. You, you don't necessarily get everything without asking for it though. And that, you know, you have to really be out there because the school's not going to be able to offer everything unless you ask. Mm -hmm. But we right. have been very pleased with what we've received at this point. And I can't say enough good things about Souderton. So shout out to Souderton. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Shout out I to Souderton. To, I wanted to give a shout out, you know, to North Penn. I mean, they were a really great school as well. You know, um, we talk about um, schooling. And I said mm -hmm. this on the show a couple of times. I, um, the school gave up on me to saying you're never going to read or write. And I talked about that in the beginning. And, you know, God again brought me to the right schooling at the right time called the Talk Institute. And that really changed my life. But, you know, if I didn't go to that school, I would have never known how to read or write. There you go. Yeah. Thank you for that question, Ben. So, no, absolutely. So, and I just, just want to go into. North Penn High School is the best school. I mean, I, I still have Satterton, but they're but everybody's so nice there, and, and I talk about them all the time, and they are an incredible school. Um, the mayor, the mayor of North Penn, actually speaks. Shout out to Satterton. I actually want to uh, put in a little bit of my two cents in the education sense. Um, unfortunately, uh, me and his mother at that time we were still married. We had a very very difficult time. Uh, with a particular organization in Philly. I don't want to say their name, uh, just to respect what they're doing right now to revamp their system. Um, but they were uh, completely um, unprofessional in the way they were handling my son and other kids like him. Uh, we had him placed into a classroom setting of children who was uh, anywhere from mild to severe on the autism mm -hmm. spectrum. That actually was not the best idea. And I want people to listen. My child, my son Shane, flourished when he was around children that were not on the spectrum. If you remember, keep in mind that children, no matter if they're on the spectrum or not, are like sponges. They are going to absorb everything they see and they hear. So if you have children around them playing, doing tag or playing basketball or running around, they're going to want to do this. They're going to find a way to actually do this. They're going to start being interactive. Apple Child Care in Philadelphia, if anybody who has a child that's on the spectrum, allowed for an aide to come into their facility to assist my son with his early pre-k learning shout out to them bob over there i can't thank you enough because that was beneficial for my son and then not only that the parents of the other children in the classroom had an opportunity to learn about shane and children just like shane and then the young girls that were working there as aides to the teacher got a chance to understand what it is to child to care for a child with special needs so it is very important that we do have that shout out to every one of these schools that was mentioned today um it is a very important part so please choose carefully where your child needs to go uh april you pointed out a very very important part iep a lot of people don't know what it is um and keep in mind that a iep doesn't necessarily have to be for a child on the spectrum a iep may actually help your child that is quote unquote normal with their success and growth inside school, whether it be middle or high school. Um, and I talked about that earlier on in the awesome show, I'm probably gonna bring it up again, but it's very intuitive, uh, it's very precise and it is needed. Uh, one quick thing, Russell, uh, excuse me, Russell, Florence, I'm sorry, Florence, if you're still with us, she had a question and it was, can people get diagnosed as an adult? Yes, they can. Yes, I they can. have seen people at the age of 60, be diagnosed with autism. 
But just like you said, April, because back in those latter days, they didn't know what it was. And quite frankly, between me and you, they still don't know what it is. They, they just put a title to it, and now they think they know what it is. They don't know and what it is. And there's a lot of different levels to it as well. It is. And it is, unfortunately. Having the label, Jamil, I know it's you as a parent as well. We didn't want to necessarily have her labeled. Her dad and I were concerned about that. But a psychiatrist was really kind and sat us down and explained to us that it was more to help that, them um, and also to help us get the funding that we need. Because mm -hmm. what it does is it puts her in a category so she can receive the proper funding and the proper services. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you're, if you're blind, you're going to need to tell people you're blind. If you have cancer, you need to tell people you have cancer, but we're so afraid to talk about a mental illness or a health illness. This gives her the opportunity to now get the services that she needs because mm -hmm. people understand it. And then mm -hmm. also, it also gives the school an opportunity to fund out for services as well because they can. So having a label necessarily isn't as bad of a thing as people think mm -hmm. as long as it's used for the betterment of the individual. True. And I definitely do agree with that 100%. Um, it's definitely something that is is needed. Um, I tell people on a regular, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on the autism scale because I feel as though if, if my son is on the spectrum, I am too. I live him. He lives me. I'm learning about his world. So when you speak about autism and my son, you're speaking about both of us because I am there with him. I'm going to understand how he how he thinks, how he talks, how he feels, what makes him sad, what gives him anxiety. These are the things that I am going to understand. So I can definitely, uh, you know, I can definitely relate to that. And, and, and once again, just talking a little bit about what I had to go through um, because of uh, uh, abnormality on my body, which you couldn't really tell unless you really see it, I've got gawked at by adults and kids. Uh, people have said mean things to me, which really affected me early on in my childhood. But then I got to a point where I was just like, eh, I am who I am. And you're just going to accept me for who I am. And, and that's it. And I just, you know, didn't care about it. But I did have a label for that that long period of time. So I could definitely understand what our children are going through. And, um, you know, I label them as superheroes. You know, nothing less but superheroes because they are just tremendously talented um, individuals. And um, it's real, real good that you bring up that that point is because I want you to both uh, think about what would you like to see in the autism community more of? Like what what what's happening now that you guys are saying, OK, you know what? That's good. That's a step forward. But well, what's something that you really need more of in the autism community? Wow, that's a great question. And the first thing that I think, I mean, obviously schools are stepping up and they're learning more. However, um, I think that typical teachers, the, the teachers that Rachel and um, Ben and children like her are going out into their classrooms, like English teachers and what have you, they're not getting enough support. They're not they don't know enough about the disabilities that are coming mm -hmm. or the different abilities, I should say, coming into their classrooms. And a special ed teacher like myself, we can advocate and we can help, but I think that it would be really helpful if more um, teachers as well as um, people in the community were given support so that they understand how to work with all different types of students. Um, job coaching is fantastic. I was a job yes. coach for a while. I went into the, the centers and I helped them work with children and with individuals and adults. That needs to happen more as well. We need exactly. to have more people advocating for our different ability people in the community because they sometimes are afraid to advocate for themselves. They don't want to stand out. They don't necessarily want to look different from everyone else. But um, I think that it's important that the communities are starting to be more mindful of this, more understanding mm -hmm. of it. I obviously the Americans with, I mean, the um, Individuals Dis with Disabilities Act has made it open for people. Mm -hmm. However, autism doesn't have a typical look, mm -hmm. which makes them mm -hmm. less 
likely to be understood. Mm -hmm. And because of that, if I may, it's very hard for Rachel at times too, because people expect her to be just like everybody else. And mm -hmm. she's not necessarily going to be just like everybody else. She's not in a wheelchair. So, okay, well, we don't see that. She doesn't have the different look and the facial features of Down syndrome, so we can't mm -hmm. see that. So autism doesn't have that look. So because I'm her mom, I can help by advocating for her, but she needs to be um, fearless. And unfortunately, we don't have a lot of that. And that's why I want people like Rachel, like Ben, to be able to be out there to advocate for other individuals with disabilities because they need to know it's okay to talk about their differences without feeling as if people are going to look down on that, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. That's what I would like to see. There's so many abilities that each person brings to the table, but a mm -hmm. lot of people are afraid to um, speak about those things or to talk to students like her and say, hey, Rach, what is it about you? What do we need to know at a job site or what have you? They're afraid. And we need to have less fear. If, if anything, this show right here is showing me that we need to have less fear out there. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to all the job coaches out there um, who are doing a really good job. You know, um, All Tech is a great, great organization that do a lot of job coaching out there. Um, special shout out to them. Um, I just, you know, I want to thank people at North Penn. You know, North Penn has great job coaches. And even Souderton, too, you know. Um, you know, I've learned a lot from uh, Matt Waters. Um, he was one of my job coaches through uh, Mitzvah Circle and Olive Garden. He taught me how to host. You know, there I'm you so go. thankful how he can teach me how to do many different stuff, you know. I'm so thankful for many teachers that can teach me some different ways. There you go. Ben, you got question number 10. You yes, good, sir. Ben. What would be the message that you would like to receive about autism? Receive and understand about autism, about the world? Um, I'm not quite sure. Let me hear that question again. What, what, would, the be the, what would be a message you would like to, would you like, would, would like for you to receive and understand about autism. What he's saying is basically, what's, what's the question you would like the world to receive and understand about autism? About autism. Be, be as real as possible. Be as blunt and real as possible because this is going out into can the whole world and they want to know it. from your perspective. Can you, can you hear me? I can, yes. Okay, sorry. The first thing that I think is the most important, again, with the whole label thing, which isn't a bad thing, Let's not stigmatize people. Let's not stick them in a box and Absolutely. assume that they are a certain way. By doing that, you're not giving Rachel, Ben, other children, adults, individuals like her, the opportunity to tell their story. We tend to want to compartmentalize people and say, oh, autism, oh my gosh. There isn't enough a lot of education about autism. And when I first re received the diagnosis, I didn't know a lot about it. And I was a teacher studying it. I knew that most autistic people either were Rain Man mm -hmm. or they were nonverbal. Or skunk. I didn't know there was this middle. Mm -hmm. Or skunk. You can't really get that education because not everybody fits up here or down here. And this is specifically for autism. Um, obviously, there's a lot of other levels and other disabilities as well. But in the autism, there's a spectrum and there's a reason for that spectrum because there are so many individuals that don't match the high or the low. But the problem is, is that the general public has sometimes already has a predisposed idea of what autism is. Mm -hmm. and most of us think it's the genius, aut like um, Einstein or the Rain Man type. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily that is the case and Rachel obviously doesn't have that type of autism which was more on the Asperger's end of it the biggest thing is is we need to get more education out there yes um, definitely we need to get more people understanding it a little bit more because we're seeing more of it right. we're definitely seeing more children diagnosed today than I ever believed that there would be can I can I just piggyback real quick um sure. We talked about police training um, with people on the autism spectrum. 
Like we need that today. Like I've talked with Tom Island. I've talked with so many people about police training and autism. And I think it's something that we need today um, with everything that's going on. You know, um, I love Tom Island because he talks about Be Safe the movie. Um, mm -hmm. If you never heard about it, you should look it up. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You're Definitely. right, but it's not enough. Um, it's important to have the community understand and be aware of your issues and your concerns because um, there are children with autism that will shut down and mm -hmm. they may be used in settings, in hospitals, in um, if a police officer comes up to them. We don't want um, our community helpers, so to speak, to be afraid or to not be available to understand these types of things. Mm -hmm. So I, I just would like to see less stigmatism, if anything. Yeah. And then and July 9th is going to be our next, it's our next panel. So we'll be talking about part two of our series about police force and autism and how we can help our community better. And you guys are going to be one of our panelists. Good. Cool. That's great. Yeah, so yeah. we're going to be talking about some like different stuff, and I'm hoping we get a bigger audience for that. We definitely because... will. Definitely will. Rachel, what's your what's your message? I'm kind of interested in in wanting to hear what you would just like the world to know about autism. I think my message is definitely don't judge people just because they have autism. Yes. Always talk to the person and see how they can make adjustments to fit your needs and stuff like that because you don't need to make fun of somebody just because they have a special needs that you can't see mm -hmm. absolutely 100 percent correct 100 percent correct definitely a a great statement it is now into the cosmos of what we call internet so it will live long well before, after you guys have paid your just dues here on earth and, and up in heaven your comment will actually live long, and hopefully by that time, uh, we will know the true uh, origin of autism. We will know how to effectively um, engage autism. I'm not going to say fight because we don't want to call it a disease. It's, it's not a disease. Our children are a gift, uh, but we'll be able to effectively gauge autism and help those individuals that fall upon the spectrum. So definitely uh, thank you for your input with that. Uh, now is the fun time. I can't hear ask you. That everyone who wants to ask a question, just state your first name and uh, just make sure you just basically say who the question is for. If it's for April or Rachel, just make sure you state that. So, uh, first person. Hello, guys. Hi, hey, Wayne. Hey, uh, I have a question. Go hey, ahead, what's Wayne. Up, Wayne? So um, when I first met Rachel in high school, she was one of the bestest friends that I knew in my life. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I miss you. I miss you too, buddy. I miss you. <laughs> like a little family right here going on. Okay. Yeah, it is. <laughs> cool. I got a question for Rachel. Okay, hey, Dad, what's up? Uh, Rachel, when did you graduate from Soderton and what are you, what are you doing now? Okay, I graduated this year actually. Um, what I'm doing right now is I'm going to be going into the STAR program, which is basically a work studies program and I get to stay there until I'm 21. Any other questions? The floor is yours. Hello? 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 Hey, I'm a loyal viewer here. Hey, what's, what's going on? <laughs> yes, you are. I apologize. You I just wanted to say to April that I can, I can see a lot of myself in your daughter, like with the echolalia and the love for music. It's just, it's just great how much in common we all have. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was an incredible benefit for Rachel. So I'm, I'm really glad. Music seems to be an incredible way to bring language um, because when you sing you activate both hemispheres of your brain and that's not something a lot of people know mm. and that's why um, actually I was going for my doctorate which is not something I talked about to most people studying music how it can open up language they use music for speech therapy for stroke victims 
for um, brain injury because oh, they wow. can usually they can remember songs and if they can start to sing they can start to learn to speak. Oh wow! And so it's an incredible bridge for those who have um, verbal issues. So the, it's an untapped resource. Wow. That's and I cool. had a question for sorry Jamal. <laughs> uh, I had a I had a question for uh, Rachel. Yes. What are your um sorry? <laughs> what are your um other interests like? What are your What do you really really like besides music? Um, I love a lot of stuff. I love theater. I love let's see. I like. Disney, just I like Descendants. Um, I also like princesses and fairy tales. And what? You like working with children? And I love working with children. And animals. And animals, too. She is really good with the animals. <laughs> That's so nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. by the way, Rachel. Right. Yes? I uh, sent you a friend request on Facebook if you want to talk to me there. Oh, oh. oh, yeah, thank you. I'll definitely follow That's you. What's your name? What's your name? Um, I'm Alyssa, but I go by Alyssa Faith on uh, Facebook. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. And cool. and she loves Nickelodeon. Yep. Yes, I do. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for job. adding that, Ben. <laughs> Rachel, Rachel, are you a uh, do you uh, sensory seeker or avoider? Do you avoid sensory input? <laughs> That's a good question. Rachel loves. Hugs. Rachel loves love hugs. Um, touch is really good for Rachel. Sounds and smells avoid. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Just sounds and smells. That was a big thing for her. Matter of fact, for a long time, what's your biggest fear at school? The smoke detectors. Smoke detectors. They have oh, wow. a really? smoke detectors at school. Any unusual noises, especially high pitch noises, were hard mm. for her. Yeah. Like the fire alarm? I didn't like that when I was a kid. Because I went, Bee. I was like, ah. Wow. It was very hard for her to accept and understand. And that's, you know, there's a lot to that. But yeah, those, but she loves love and hugs and touches. And yeah. that was something that her dad and I were very good at, you know, wanting to make sure that she wasn't going to be an avoider, which can happen. Mm -hmm. We're very huggy people. We're very touched, you know very much into that but she also received a lot of therapy for that she had brushing program at school um, which kind of sounds weird but they would use a special type of brush to desensitize her to allow her to feel things and to give her the opportunity to accept things that maybe wouldn't be as as comfortable for her at the time that's yep. where the whole intervention stuff comes in you gotta you really gotta get that intervention stuff at the beginning early before they start yep. forming fears and things you are right. You are definitely right. You are definitely right. Um, I remember the brush. Jane had the brush, so I do remember. <laughs> the brush. I remember that that process. It was it was long, but it was it was worth it. It definitely is worth it because they give the best hugs ever um, that you could possibly yeah. get. So a lot of love, yeah. a lot of warmth. Yeah. Definitely, yes, definitely. Any more questions? I have one. Okay. Oh, hey, Max, what's up? Hey, Ben, how are you? Oh, that's uh, Max. As, um, as a fan, as a very big fan of uh, theater and having been in uh, productions, everything from uh, Fiddler on the Roof to Mamma Mia and back, uh, is there a particular life lesson from a show or from theater itself that you would uh, impart to people on Spectrum to yeah. assist them? Oh, yes, there is. Um, the show that I really like is Annie, and we, my mom and I were actually in it last year, and my favorite song from it is Sorrow, and it really is a good song because even if you're having a bad day, you know that tomorrow is a brand new day, and sometimes I usually sing the song that whenever I'm sad or something, it always helps me to know that tomorrow is a good day. Yes, and to piggyback off of Rachel, Said, up until about sixth grade, Rachel had a lot of social social awkwardness. And when I realized um, that she had this talent in memorizing and really memorizing, she got into the um, play at the music.
musical at the school. And the director was so kind, they could see Rachel had the ability to memorize everyone's parts. Yes. She was literally memorized the whole show. Yes. And so if anyone oh. was sick or anyone was out, she went up and took their part. And what happened is, is that it gave her something that was her own. It helped her find her voice, if I could say, because people started to see something special in her. Where instead of her being socially awkward on the playground, being the one who walked around with her own thing, people would search her out because Rachel now felt comfortable with something. And the best part about theater, and I can say this for myself, it's really hard to talk as me, as April, or as Rachel. But when you have a script in front of you, it makes life so much easier to navigate at times. And so giving them the opportunity to use the script to start that whole conversation thing is really helpful. That's one thing that musicals and plays help people with. Practicing, practicing talking, practice. We need practice. Oh yeah. Exactly. It's easy for everyone. Nope. Right. Absolutely right. Good question, Max. Good question. Good to hear you. Uh, Me too, yeah. Wish I could say see you, but good to hear from you again, Max. Thank you for, uh, be in tune with us tonight. Any more questions? All right. And it is raffle time. Ben, it is time to the raffle. raffle. And then we have a couple announcements afterwards. And then okay. see where we marks. All right. So the winner for the candles. Are you ready to rumble? I'm just kidding. The winner there you go. is. Florence. Florence. Yeah. Florence, you are in for a treat. Those candles are simply amazing. Simply amazing. And Ben, the second winner. Who's going to win those silly uh, pretzel gift actually, cards? Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to double it up. I'm going to actually, instead of 10, I'm going to do 15 tonight. Wow. Oh. Big I'm spender. Tonight, folks. I think this is a double prize. You know what? The winner for the $15 Philly Pretzel gift certificate is Denise Cott. Denise! Shout out to Denise for winning that. Is Denise on? Hello? Yes, I am. Thank you very much. Hey, Charlene. congratulations, Denise. Thank you, but the, the highlight tonight is watching my girl. <laughs> Watching Rachel and April, oh, yeah. you did a wonderful job. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. You know, I got it. sappy, didn't I? Yeah. But Denise, thank you. Do you like Philly Pretzel Factory? Oh, big time, dude. It's right around the corner from where I live. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. That's what's up. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for listening. So we want to congratulate you guys once again. And mm -hmm. if you want to support what we do here. Ben and Jay Show has a lot of big things coming up. And if you want to be a part of that, please consider donating to Access Services at www.accessservices, one word, dot org forward slash donate. And you can follow us on social media for encouraging updates throughout the week. So, uh, Ben, it's been a crazy, uh, crazy, quick announcements. crazy week. Next Go week, ahead. we are not having a show due to the holiday weekend. Fourth of July. So, ladies and gentlemen, we will not have a show next Friday as uh, we want you guys to just enjoy the Fourth of July. Just be around family, eat a lot of food for us. Matter of fact, invite <laughs> us over so we can eat your food, and then that will be good. Everybody will be happy. There um, you go, Jamel. And then watch 1776. That's what I do every year. <laughs> watch 1776. Watch it. You got nothing else to do. Go ahead and watch it. But uh, Rachel, April, thank you for coming on the show. Um, you guys have friends here. Uh, You're both family now. The Ben and Jay show. So you are family. So don't be afraid to reach out to us. Uh, ben, you got anything? I just wanted like to end to with my quote. Um, I just, first of all, I want to thank the Philly Pretzel Factory. I want to thank Rachel Baker for coming on tonight. Um, I like to thank my friends, um, the candle people who donated the candles, access services, and having autism is not a bad thing. It doesn't characterize who we are. Everyone is unique and special, just like a rainbow. And everyone, let's be kind to each other next week. 
just to remind this week, just a reminder, no show next week. Make sure you all be kind to each other, even during the 4th of July, which remember America, which remember our founding fathers who founded this country and helped us get our freedom here today. So I want to thank them and I want to thank our country. I want to thank everybody who's supporting us. Um, I also want to make another announcement. July 9th, don't forget to tune into the panel. Uh, big night, big, huge night. We're going to be having different people on, different perspectives, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Definitely, definitely. Well, I can't top that outro that Ben did, but I'm just basically going to, you know, do my best. Uh, once again, thank you for our guests. Once again, thank you for our sponsors. Thank you for you guys, uh, the audience who continue to support us. Um, one big thing I want to just basically say, uh, in the past couple of weeks, we have basically seen uh, human humility fall apart. Uh, what I mean by that is all of us as a human race, not as Americans, but as a human race, have dissipated what it is to be, who, what it is to have humility. We need that back. Uh, we need it now, and we need it stronger than ever. What I've noticed through my 20-some uh, odd years of parenting is that nothing speaks humility more than children, uh, especially our awesome children. They speak on so many different levels. You may not be able to capture what they are doing for your life and for those individuals that they touch. What I'm asking from you is just the simplest thing, the one thing that each one of us is asking for out of life, and that is love each other. That's it. Just yes. love. It's the cheapest thing on earth. You don't have to pay anything from it. It could be as simple as saying good morning, have a great day. It could be as simple as paying, paying it forward and paying for a cup of coffee for someone in line in front of you. It could be as simple as that. It's just called love. So I hope this weekend you guys are basking in uh, not only the sun, but love and um, just keep it going on, you know? And uh, we will continue to do the same here on the Ben and Jay show. All right, so this is Jay, one half of the Ben and Jay show, and we are signing off and saying good night to you guys. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for hey, having hey, us. Hey, 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 guys. Hey, hey, Real quick, it felt like the Jimmy Fallon show. <laughs> That's what I was trying That's to tell it. you earlier. That's it. Get us oh. on national TV. We'll get there. We'll get there. It, it, oh, Live no, from New York City, the Ben and Jay Tonight Show. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good night, y'all. Thank y'all. Have a great weekend, everybody. Love you. Hey.